What's happening, everybody? I am the Reverend Raph, and I'm here with my good friend Kyle, aka the Beer Buddy himself. Not and we How are, are here. You? Well, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. How are you doing? Dude, I'm fucking feeling so good. We've had some bangers on tonight. I've got some good content coming out for the people. We've been doing some good reactions today. So, yeah, if you've seen the recent run that we're doing, this current batch has been some primo stuff. But, yes, we are the 2 do 2 talk music, and we are here today with another reaction video for you. But before we dive into that, excuse me a moment, hit that subscribe button down there to get uh, weekly podcast interviews with a lot of Aussie bands, sometimes international ones, as well as some ancillary content on the weekends, and we do reaction videos Mondays and Fridays every week, sometimes on Wednesdays if there's lots coming out. we got videos almost every single day. We're in this big revamp phase of the channel, so get in now so you can say you were there in early days. Well, I mean early days. It's, it's the third year of doing it, but you know what I mean. When the numbers were low, you can be this, yeah. within the first 500 subscribers, <laughs> you know, you can still be in there. But look, you're here today because we've got another reaction video for you, and we've got a good one today. So this is a band that I have heard a couple of songs from in the past. Kyle has never heard these guys. Nothing. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe Tensions Arise actually played a show with these guys, at least a show, maybe a few shows, after I had left the band. This was after I'd left the band, but uh, Tensions Arise did support these guys at some stage. Uh, now, the band that we are reacting to today is called Flesh God Apocalypse. Um, if you don't know, they sort of are pretty extreme and also very, like, it's like extreme metal but has, like, symphonic elements in there. And it's they nice. just yeah, kind of heavy. they just kind mm -hmm. of do – they throw a lot of stuff at the wall. Um. And, you know, we have the latest song and video from these guys. It is called Blood Clock. Got to make sure we get that L in there. Yeah. Um, Blood Clock. And uh, we're going to check this one out right now. This is Flesh God Apocalypse with Blood Clock. Let's go. Oh, wow. I think they're Italian. Sounds like the intro to Dark Souls or some shit. <laughs> Very pretty. It is. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Like, uh, Perfect okay, example right to, of contrast. Right we see. <laughs> yeah. This is the new uh, raining blood moment right here. But that contrast is just so perfect, right? Like the nice chilled out. Um, and, and But you get the little teasers of like him in the bath with the blood going on. Yeah. And then, then it just kicks in, just goes from like pretty over here to punching you in the face. It's a beautiful harp section too. Like. Before we go further, <laughs> what's your initial? Uh, okay, so I I really dug the way they went out of that harp part into the heavier bit. For some reason, the drums sort of got a bit lost in the mix for me there. I mean, there's a lot going if you, on. If, if you know what I'm saying, when it really blasted out into those blast beats and those real sort of quicker quicker sections mm. it's filth like it's fucking really heavy mm -hmm. it, it is, is really really heavy i, I mean, uh, I'm digging it. 
Oh, like I'm not, I've not heard this song before, by the way, everyone. Like, I've yeah. heard, this, is, this isn't me showing Kyle. So like I'm reacting to this song too, but I had what a bit of a thoughts? sense. Look, this is it's pretty much what I expected they were going to bring. Okay. From what I've heard of them before. Like, cause look, I listened to a couple of songs from them years ago. I'm talking like 10 years ago or, or thereabouts. And it's more or less from what I heard then. This is kind of what I was expecting there. The, okay. the visuals on this are a, a st- striking is the word I would use. It's the brightness of the red in the blood compared to the heart with the, with the darkness and the harsh lighting that they're using is create it creates a very very intense visual here yeah because um, you know there's bodies you can't see them properly but the red is just so in your mm. face it just sort of really it thickens out the the shadows in the black and i don't know mm. just yeah 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 and i'm look I'm a, I'm a big fan of i'm a big fan of like black and white with a color highlight in there um and that's not necessarily what they're doing here but it's affecting this it's like similar vibes um, just from the way it's all staged and mm. lit to me, it's giving a similar impact. Um, I want to go back. I just want to listen there. That yeah, coming out during of the, the part. during the really intense section. I don't know if it was just my imagination, but I felt like I could hear some like timpani drums underneath as well. Um, that were kind of maybe a little buried in the mix there, but I'm certain I could hear something more than just like drums, guitar, and bass going through mm. there. I do want to go back. Like the, you hear almost yeah. like a horn section maybe or something underneath there. Like this, and this is very typical for these guys from what I understand. Like they go in, they utilize a lot of, of this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, I like what they're bringing. Um, See, this, and- that section coming out is really not. Nice. Mm. The drums is really tight on it. If, I guess it follows really well. It's what it's meant to do. Mm, or the, mm. or the guitar parts follow it really well, but it's just coming out of it when it's everything just one of the, explodes. Yeah. It's just one of those things where we, there's so much going on that stuff is bound to get buried in the mix. I think it's really hard. And this is one of the problems with- It's probably my primitive ears don't know what the, what exactly I'm supposed to be focusing on at the one time, and it just picks the drums. Possibly. I mean, look, it's, it's when you've got this much happening this quickly- uh, it, it's just, yeah, mixing becomes a greater challenge than it might otherwise with something that has more space in it. You know, there's not a lot of space here for things to breathe, which mucks with your ability to to hear it and the mixing and just plays with the whole process. Let's keep going though. I'm really digging this so far. <laughs> The way that builds. Go back a bit. Hearing that, the, hearing that, the, the, the way that, do, 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 do. yeah, it like builds underneath and kind of raises up. That's intense, man. <laughs> Disappears, 
I genuinely yeah. really liked the way he went into that little spoken word bit. It really broke that up nicely. That was yeah. really, really, really good. Mm. And then the when, no, it, when I, it came I, back in and you've got the choir behind them as well, that is, this is what I mean, like, that's the kind of, not necessarily like symphonic black metal necessarily, but like they have these little like symphonic elements in there and like yeah. choral elements and the blending of those, they kind of, I don't know if it's horns or what, but that thing that keeps kind of coming with the, with the boom kind of yeah, thing in the background. Yeah, that down, that's. And the harp blended in, it's, this is a lot of people, a lot of people couldn't balance the elements the way these guys are doing yeah. And that's what I was just about to say. Look, all, look, I think all black metal needs to have it because it's just so in your face all the time. It'd just be a wash of distortion and drums and noise. I think you need those symphonic elements in there to really sort of cre create space on the pylon of instruments mm -hmm. in the heavier parts. These guys do it really well. Other, like with a lot of bands, it's either like really it's all it's all in this end or it's all in that end. There's, it's really hard to find a nice line of balance. Mm. Which is probably why it doesn't resonate with me so well. But this lot, I really enjoy what they're doing here. That little, mm. that little quieter part. It's 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 good layering. And I tell you what. I tell you what. Like he's a he's a he's a pretty attractive like dude. Ha but he looks <laughs> like Hades. He looks like a like, yeah he, yeah. Like that's it's it's very like you know it's the very um, Victorian sort of gothic look mm. he's got going on there, but. Dishevelled and, and tied in with that, it's you would steal your girl and turn her into a vampire at the same time. <laughs> yeah, for the uh, the casting for the remake of um, Interview with a Vampire. Um, yeah, I'm very interested to see how that goes down. Turns this chronic to red, tick tock like a clock. Love till it. My veins are empty and the wind blocks a heart while my soul disappears. But I'm not dead yet. <laughs> The way that drops back and the guitars are coming in and out there. It's oh, just about to say what's really nice of what they do is how I think it's that little chorus or the, that it, that straight riff. Mm. Nothing really too too much onto it, mm. other than obviously that first part with all the chorus, like with the with the choir and stuff like that. Came back into this. Now is leading yeah. into this part. That was but yeah, it's like that. Just like that. It's, it's like nice not straight. overly, yeah. It's very straightforward, but the way that they've that they're building everything and just growing the song as they're working through it, it's like you know yeah. when a band does the core things, the the simple things, really, really well. Everything else just falls into place so much easier. And I do appreciate a black metal band that's just not being heavy for the sake of being heavy. Mm. Like yeah, that, yeah. No, that there's a time to pull back and let the song do its thing. It doesn't need to be this. Yeah. Oh, this is extreme. Like the thing with a lot of black metal can ha that have, can happen with a lot of black metal is it can become not. Yeah, like you say it can be heavy for the sake of being heavy. It can be harsh for the sake of being harsh. It almost gets to a point where it's trying to be grating and unmusical in a way, which I guess is kind of the point of some of it. But yes. this retains that heaviness while being very melodic, very musical, very driven by, you know, those little, like like I said, those those choral and symphonic elements that are popping up in the background in those very select places. And when they're when they're gone, it makes the song, it pushes the song into that 
sort of harsher, more grating territory that I just mentioned. But when they come back in, it moves, slides it back onto the very melodic side with only a very minor shift underneath taking place. Yeah. And it's so very, very finely tuned. Like that's what I think this song is finely tuned. It's a great way that I think it's a great way to describe that one. It is. It is. Because, yeah, I'm not, look, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest black metal fan, like, at, at all, you know. Just, like, I make fun of it all the time. Chances are if I can't read your band name, I'm not going to like it. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh. But this, this is really it. well constructed. They've built on the song really well. It's mm. not overly obnoxious with their blast beats and, 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 the, and the kick patterns and stuff like that. And imp- very importantly for me, the blast beats are staying in time. If there's one thing that grinds my gears no end, it's when a band throws blast beats in the song that are not in time with everything else that's happening. They're just blast beats as fast as they can be played, but they're not in time with what's happening and they kind of shift across the time of the beat. And that, like, I don't, like, I hate that. I hate that. I'm very rhythm focused in what I do musically and what I enjoy musically. And if, you, if that's going on, I'm sorry. Either play them, if you can't play them fast enough to keep up with the beat, play something else. And yeah, if, you can, if, you, if you can play them fast enough to keep up with the beat, but you're playing faster than the beat because you want to play them as fast as you can, get better control. And I know I'm not a drummer and I know I'm not a drummer and I know there's going to be some drummers that are going to fucking be shitty at me for saying that, but I don't give a shit. Like I'm a bass player. I'm very rhythm focused in my musical, in what I do musically and what I enjoy musically. And, you know, it's a, it's just like, if you can't, if you can't do it and keep on the beat, don't do it. Mm. And look, we we fully are aware that you, in your head, in a lot of drummers, you write it to be the quickest thing in the world. Wait till you get triggers. Wait till you have the equipment to do it before you actually start implementing that into the songs that you want to play even, live. Because I don't even like, think it's what? about equipment. I don't even think it's about equipment. I think it's purely about, you know, being over eager, wanting to play it as fast as you can rather than keeping it where the beat is. Mm. And that might not be, you know, someone might come at me and go, or, oh, you know, you just, you just don't get it or, you know, it's more brutal that way or it's, you know, whatever. I'm sorry. To me, it just sounds like not playing in time. No, and it doesn't serve the song. It doesn't do anything. Anyway, well, let's get back to this one. That's not what we're talking about here. These guys are <laughs> nailing it. The blast beats are, they are right in the pocket. Let's keep going. We've got plenty of song to go, to go so. Blood clock. Dude, this. Hear how he screams, moving with a. It's not a lot, moving with a lot of pitch, but it's not monotonal. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pitching that. He's, he's pitching it. He's moving with it. It's it's. It's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's just slight variations in his voice that are just really like yeah. Oh, I love his. Look, love pitch, his vocals. pitch screams. Pitch screams are oh. very very difficult. They are a high level part of the toolbox, mm. um, especially those kind of screams, getting some pitching going in there. Uh, now, to be fair, it could possibly be the choir vocals underneath it, giving mm. it the illusion of, sh- of pitched vocals, that or the pitch screams, that could also be a factor in here. Uh, but I agree, it's a very, it's sounding like the way it's moving that's not monotone, like his... His vocal has character and range and expressiveness and, you know, some some vocalists, you you know, some vocalists lose that. They've got a good scream or in a good, but that's kind of all they have and they don't mm. have a lot of those other factors that are so important to take it beyond just being a good scream. So, but yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Let's check that again. Why is he 
digging up a grave. Don't dig up a grave, my guy. No, at least use a shovel. That thing's Let's, filthy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there's there's a bunch of things you could use to dig right there. Yeah. Just use one of those at least, but don't go digging up graves. That's not good business. Maybe that's why he's having a bath. Maybe. Maybe that's maybe, maybe he's maybe he's having the bath after he um he stuck. Maybe this is like a time jump thing. <laughs> that architecture is nuts. Oh, dude. Dude. It, you said they were Italian, yeah? I I think so. I'm going to check that. Uh, I am going to double check that so that no that one comes to me for getting it wrong. Maleficent, that Maleficent devil thing look there. It just, yeah. Boom, baby. Italian symphonic death metal band. Yeah. I did. Man, I've got to say, I, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Mm. You know, they're coming up on 20 years. They formed in 2007. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel. Oh yeah, I could. Get, I, yeah, I can understand that. It sort of gives that real, mm, like old school. Oh, what's that? I can't. No, keep going. I'll figure keep out the going, you about it later. But the yeah. like, I just, I just got to say that the the architecture as well in this is, it's, it's crazy. It really is. Everything about this is just, it's beautiful. Is the best way to describe it. So yeah. all the elements about this are beautiful, while also having this the absolute brutality of the song itself. It's an incredible juxtaposition. Okay, okay. I'm going to oh. probably piss some people off when I say what I'm about to say. Oh, please do. I love it when you do this. I um, got you, man. I know they're not quite the same wheelhouse. I, th I think I prefer these guys over modern Cradle of Filth. In terms of like extreme symphonic metal, I feel like, and I know, like I said, I know they're slightly different pockets, but, um, and look, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking classic. Like I'm not talking OG Cradle of Filth. Like those first few albums, like Dusk and Her Embrace is always going to be one of my favorites. Midian is, is going to be a cult favorite for me for ages, like forever. Like, but when you talk and, you know, even getting into like Nymphetamine era and stuff like that. But I feel like when it comes to modern Cradle of Filth, this is this is way preferable for me and the way that it's like the song has shifted vibe and the drums and guitar and everything is kind of, and the, the rhythm guitar is kind of pulled back to allow like the fit that her vocal part to come through and then leading that almost blending transition into the guitar at the start of the guitar solo there. Um, this is what I mean. Like this, this is just a amount of musicality and melody and beauty that's woven throughout this very extreme song is uh unbelievable it's so good it is i want to get a bit more of this hang on i want to get this transition again I love that. You see what they did there? It's you see what the they did it, there? What's that? See how, the, see how she, she had like the vocal solo, then the guitar's obviously taken over. It's mm. kept it in the same key, kept it in the same sort of, yep. the same sort of rhythm, and then she's taken back over again. Mm. Yes. It was seamless. Yep. 
seamless is the exact word and the way it the way the piano is a lot more prominent and through this section to really shift the vibe and it's like that that is what a good guitar solo should be that is making the guitar sing it seems like it's music for musicians this stuff because it's just it's tickling oh, it's just but, oh well it is but this is also the kind of song where there's so much for you know even like a, the the lay person who just enjoys music, you know, who just enjoys heavy music without being a musician. And there's so much to enjoy in this without even really understanding the depths and the, the nuances of why they enjoy it. Um, this oh, is, yeah, this song makes you feel things. Yeah, this has got – and you, but you're right, like the transition from her vocal part into the guitar solo and back out of the guitar solo into her vocals again – it really does. Seamless is exactly the word that I think I was searching for earlier that I couldn't quite land on. So you nailed that one. Let's keep going. We got to get yeah. to the end. This is a long one. I'm sorry, guys. Oh. But there's so much going into this. It's oh, this is crazy, dude. I, I'm really happy they didn't go back into this whole. I, I was expecting it to go to, into this big blast beat. The faster, yeah, it might still come back around, but it was a nice, yeah, yeah going into this big sort of and dramatic I, section. I appreciate how there was no really screams on that solo on the on the vocal solo part there with the with the female vocalist. I really like that. Like they just yeah. let they just let her do her thing. Mm, mm. This is there's so much going on here, and there's so much like we could probably spend like another hour deep diving in this oh. one, dude. Like, and I don't want to waste everyone's time doing that because we'd be covering so many little things that a lot of people wouldn't really. I don't. Well, I don't think they would necessarily, you know, care about all that much. It would be a very niche group of people that would really, really dig that. <laughs> but hey, if you want it, if you want it, tell us, tell yeah, us in the comments. But look, let's get this one wrapped up. Let's take this home, I think. Here we go. Have they put a breakdown at the end of a symphonic death metal song? Oh, I think, oh, oh, we have, oh. Is this going to be the first? Is this going to be the first black metal band that I'm going to give a ten to? Is that they put a breakdown at the end of a symphonic death metal song. Ah, oh, that was. Bruv, that is 20 years of solid experience right there. You get the fuck out of here with that shit. That was... That... <sighs> Kyle has been left speechless, ladies and gentlemen. Bro, that was... Look, I'm like I said, I, I thought I was going to be walking into this real cliche... You know, when you read the name and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's my bad. I'm going to call my bad on that one. You know, assumptions are the mother of all fuck-ups, as we all know. But <laughs> there you go. That was crazy. And look, there you go. Okay, in the corner here, new album, Opera, out the 23rd of August this year. So these guys are coming in the fucking thing. They are bringing the absolute power. 
Um, I think I'm going to have to check out that whole album when it comes out. Like, really, I really... If they watch this and they don't understand English and they make it to the end of this... I'm pretty pretty sure they understand English. Molto bene. Yeah. Yeah. I think they speak English, too. I'm pretty sure they speak English. They're fine. Um, (laughs) But holy shit, that was good. Um, I don't know what to say that has already been said through that. Like, there's so many little things going on through that. The nuances of it were so vast and so numerous that like we just don't have time to get into them all they are really they really don't like no we're just gonna have, have to score it and you can ask us oh, questions and we'll hopefully answer them my god yeah if you got questions for us definitely let us know down in the comments i mean we got to give that a score like what bro it's it's a 10 for me for i think mm. it'll be probably one of the only black metal bands that'll probably get it like uh, they could have ended on that hard part instead they ended with a fucking a, a, a breakdown through a breakdown at the end i still i'm still i'm still that had flawed by that i'm still flawed by that like when that kicked in like when when that transitioned to the breakdown at the end i was just like wait a minute it was <laughs> Yes. It was, yes. I just had no, I was like, what? And that was, a, it was unreal. That was so fucking good. I do not have, the, like, I do not have the words to properly do justice to how much I enjoyed that song, both as just a listener and as a musician. Mm. That was unreal. That might be one of my favourite songs of the year so far. Yeah. Any of you metalheads um, from Australia that are about to do your Viva Voce, this song, man, this is your song, Dad. <laughs> See, if, take it on. Tackle it and let us know how you went. Um, okay, so you giving it a 10 out of 10. 100%. Uh, I, I have to give it a 10 out of 10 as well. I think that was, that was unreal. Um, in contrast to the speed reaction that's in this current batch that we're doing, which was like lean, intense, old school, hardcore, no fat on it. This was like, this was like decadent and full of excess in the best way possible, um, which I absolutely loved. So we both gave it a 10. That's a certified 10 out of 10 from the two dudes talk music which means this is fucking awesome i agree i agree i'm i'm really probably i'm a i'm looking forward to that next album and i'm gonna go check out some of the older stuff yeah i think yep i think there we go ladies and gentlemen i think we found a new band for kyle to dive into so congratulations we done that we got that for you we got there yay do i have a yay sound on here do i have a yay sound on here i don't know if i do no i don't Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. We have a yay sound. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you think in the comments. I realize this was a long one. There was a lot happening in this song that we just had to touch on, and there's so much more going on with these guys. But let us know your thoughts down in the comments, um, and, and, you know, hit that like button if you like the video. Watch our long form shit. If you didn't <laughs> like it. Downvote the shit out of it. If you had a good time with us today and you want to get more from us, hit the subscribe button. We're the two dudes who talk music. I have been Raf. This has been Kyle, a.k.a. The Beer Buddy, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody. (laughs) 